All right. Okay. Saturday, Saturday, Saturday. All right, we are live. Hello, everyone. Good morning. Good evening. Good morrow. I don't know. Uh, we are here with Sam and Tanisa um, for a, yet another knitting extravaganza, knitting tacular. Those aren't words, and now I'm making Tanisa say them. I'm so sorry. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm a terrible uh, human being. So, and I'm also speaking fast, but we have our attendees loading in now. Hello, everyone. I am uh, currently currently not hungover. I am currently uh, opening up chat right now so that you all can chat. Uh, and we have a lot to get through today, too, so I don't want to talk too much, but uh, we're very excited to be here. How are you, Sam? I'm great. Thank you. Excellent. Uh, how are, are you? Friends? You told I, us how you are. I will no, not I'm make great. you stand on it. <laughs> don't I look I look fresh faced and ready to take on the world. You do actually. Um I okay, let's see if let's just make sure chat is still on here. Yep. Okay. Oh, let me open chat too. Hold on. There we are. Hello. Hi. Karen, Therese, Ray, Gabby, all these people. Hi everyone. Hoy. Is that how you say it from the Netherlands? Hoy. Man. How do you say it in Western New York? Hi. <laughs> Yo, all right. Um, I'm gonna let you do your thing. That's Eastern but... New York. Yep, hoy. Oh, yeah. No, yo, it's Eastern New York. It is Eastern New York. You're right. Yep, hoy, hoy. Hey, hey. Just before we get started on knitting, uh, how how was the earthquake for you over there on the East Coast? Was that the weirdest thing of all time? So I was sitting in the dining room on my computer, la la la, doing some work, and the house started. It there wasn't like in Los Angeles. It's always like a thump, and then it rattles. This didn't have any thump or like, it just kind of went And at first I'm like, oh, this is an earthquake. I'm like, I'm in Connecticut, we don't have earthquakes. I'm like, did the generator explode? Is it about to explode? It's right outside this window. Did the water, cause we have a water filtration system. I'm like, did that blow up? Did a tree fall? No, there was no, what? I, psychological is there warfare. a train? I'm like, I'm going through, this is in like 10 seconds. Meanwhile, it's still shaking. And then it kind of, and it stops. And I run upstairs uh, next door to my husband's wood shop. And I'm like, did you feel that? And of course he's got like the sander and the saw and he's like, takes out his, no. I'm like, so I texted our, um, our neighborhood group chat and I was like, um, so, and then, and then it started coming through. My son was like, did you feel that? Our whole school went crazy. And so wow. I knew I wasn't crazy, but, um, I was annoyed. Yeah. I moved from Los Angeles and haven't given a second thought to hanging anything on the walls or putting them on shelves or anything. And now I'm second guessing everything. Well, uh, this, this, exp this class is going to rock and roll just like an earthquake. So I'm very excited for it. I'm going to let you do your thing and we're going to get into, uh, the number two, hopefully everyone has their pattern as well. We talked about that last time, but yeah, I'll uh, yes. take it away, Sam. Hi everyone. So we were going to today do a quick, quick review of knitting, a little uh, going over purling again for anyone who didn't get it last time. Um, and then we're going to talk about swatches and measuring and why that's important and uh, a little just going over everything. So um, basic, basic vocabulary. This is a skein of yarn. If you try to just open this up and knit from this, we will never see you again because your hands will be tangled and you'll have to ask for help. You want to open it up and it will look like this, like a giant loop. And it will have little areas that are tied together so that it doesn't untangle, so it doesn't get tangled. You wanna untie those and like loop this over the back of a chair or a willing participant's hands like this. Um, sometimes I just make my husband put his feet out and I'll put it over the tops of his feet. And then you take the end and you wind it into a ball little by little and you end up with this. This you can knit from. This you will wad it into a ball if you can escape from it, throw it away and probably never want to knit it again. So that is my little spiel on skeins. You're going to want one of these. This is um, a finishing needle. See, I just, I throw yarn in it so that I don't lose it. But it's just, it's a big fat needle with a slightly pointed end. It's very, it's not pointy at all. Um, and you can go through the yarn without splitting it and you can finish in your ends. So you'll need one of these. Also for looping through like, we're gonna make a little tie. 
So we have this and it helps like get it through the stitches. You're gonna want some kind of ruler, a ruler or um, I use, a. I think my measuring tape is downstairs. It's just, a, you know, what a little measuring tape is. Um, I also have one of these. This measures a square inch of knitting. So when you put it on your knitted things, you can count how many stitches across and how many stitches up and down are within a square inch, which is important because, for example, when I measured my cup, this was from my friend Jojo, it's one of my favorites. Um, I was like, oh, we want this cozy to be about four inches. And you would use the measuring tape and measure it around and be like, oh, mine is about nine inches around from here all the way around. And then the little bar, you know, goes through. So you, you don't want to knit past the handles. So how do you know when you're knitting how many stitches to do? Well, you do it with a swatch, okay? So you make, you make my test swatch is still a little small, but you would make the test swatch and you'd make it about 20 stitches by 20 stitches, about three by three inches. Then you would measure the center because if it's on the needle and you measure it, it can be pulled apart a little and the cast on edge can be contracted a little. So you wanna measure right in the middle and you wanna count how many stitches across and how many rows down. So when you're doing the stitches across, you say, oh, it's five stitches per inch. I need it to be four inches wide. I'm gonna cast on 20 stitches. I know, it's math. You signed up for knitting, not math, but knitting is math. I'm sorry, Charlie, no. <laughs> he was gonna make a smart comment about math. I know he was. Um, <laughs> so anyway, so that that is what the swatch is about. And that is for any knitting. So any pattern. A lot of my friends will only do a pattern according to the yarn that is called for in the pattern. But say you have an amazing yarn that's a little thicker or a little thinner than what the pattern calls for. You can do a swatch. And if you can compare the number of stitches per inch in the pattern versus what you actually have, you can adapt any yarn to any pattern and have autonomy over your projects. But that that is a little more advanced, but tick, tuck that into your knowledge and you'll be able to understand. Um, nice face, Charlie. See, um, Charlie, it is your face and I love your face. Uh, gadget that winds yarn from a skein. Yes, the, my yarn shop has a gadget that winds yarn from a skein that makes it really nice. It's true, you can. it looks like an umbrella and you can clamp it onto the edge of your desk and open it up and lay the skein around it and you crank it and it winds it into a ball and the thing spins. It's pretty cool. I have not gotten there yet. I just use my husband. Um, okay, so I would like to know who has made a little swatch or start? Some people I saw have posted online that they've finished like six tea cozies already. But if you've done a swatch, I want you to measure and jot down how many stitches per inch. As far as rows per inch, the good news about this is that you're just gonna keep knitting until you reach the amount that you need for your particular mug or your average mug and then you can just stop. We're not trying to measure against anything else. So the rows per inch is less important now than the stitches across per inch. You're about halfway done. Okay. So I'm going to introduce something that the mean part of me likes. You guys aren't going to like it. It's called frogging. Does anyone here know what frogging is? Uh, I finished my knitting, my clothes, we haven't finished it. No, no, <laughs> somebody knows what frogging is. Okay, frogging. So after you do your, your swatch, so my, my knitting, this yarn on a size seven needle, 4.5 millimeters is um, five stitches per inch. So 
I'm going to need 20 stitches. My sample only has two, four, six, eight, 10, 12. So this is going to be more of a stripe than a cozy. So what we're going to do, now sometimes you only have to do frogging for like if you miss, make a mistake, like you find a mistake in this row or two rows down, you'd only have to do two rows of frogging. In this case, because I don't have enough stitches on my needle, we're gonna frog out the whole thing. And it's called frogging because you rip it, rip it, rip it, you rip it out. So I'm taking the needle out and we're ripping it out. Don't be afraid, you can just redo it. Down to the original knot. Sometimes, you know, just pull it all up. I'm just gonna go down to the original knot. And now I know I need 20 stitches, so I'm gonna start over and cast on 20 stitches. Oh my God, what, exactly. Rip it, rip it. Um, and no on the frogging. Exactly, <laughs> my daughter just said if she doesn't frog it at least three times, she didn't even make it. Exactly. It's like measuring twice, cutting once, except you've knitted twice and ripped out once, frogged once. Okay. So um, now you know what to call it. Exactly. So casting on, quick review. You grab the yarn. You wrap it around your thumb like this. Sorry. You wrap your thumb over and around. So it ends up like this. This goes over. Okay. You're going to grab the yarn. You're going to wrap your thumb over and around. Now you're, the knot is already on the needle. You're gonna stick your thumb under the piece that's underneath. You're gonna take this long piece that's attached to the ball. You're gonna wrap it around the needle. And the piece that's now over your thumb is gonna go over the point and you're gonna gently pull it taut, not tight. Just pull it so that it's on there, okay? What is happening there? Hold on. Okay. Uh, just the the knit, the stitch was twisted. So you're gonna again like this. You're gonna put it through, wrap it around, and put it over. Now I've got three stitches on the needle. Cast on three stitches, including that first knot. I've had to frog several rows during different projects. is painful. It is. You know what? For me, the frogging is easy. Pulling out the stitch is easy. It's getting the stitches back on the needle without twisting them and making sure you get them all. It requires a lot of patience. Um, but there's no point in spending all this time making, making a project and then just leaving, like a mistake is fine if you've twisted a stitch or whatever, but if there's a drop stitch or it, just, it's gonna unravel and it's gonna cause more trouble than it's worth. And when the project is done to me, I'd rather have done it right than have to like, go back and um, sort of jerry-rig the, the, the mistake. Um, but after five lessons, I finally got it. Nice word, Karen. Okay, so I'm just gonna go ahead and continue to cast on till I get to 20. So basically, you're just using your fingers as the other needle. You're knitting yarn onto the needle. There's not really, I don't think there's a way to do it with two needles So you because you have to wrap from two two pieces of yarn. So I'm at two, four, six, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Getting there, 13. Can we fast forward? Nineteen and twenty. So this is going to make a four inch strip as I knit. Because for this thing, this tea cozy, we're not knitting this way back and forth on these long rows. We're knitting down. And so we just keep going until it's the right length. So the pattern for this, I hope all of you got the pattern. This is not flat knitting. It's uh ribbing, it's knit, purl, knit, purl, knit, purl. But when you flip it over, instead of knitting the knits and purling the purls, you switch it so that it alternates and it becomes something called seed stitch. And it doesn't roll, because a lot of times if it's just flat knitting, it'll roll, the ends will roll in. And it's super, super flat. And it's also a little grippy. 
So it's not, it's, it's got some texture to it. So it's not as smooth as knitting. Um, you can see these things I made. This is, this is flat knitting. Okay. It's just all knit on one side, all purl on the other. This is alternating knitting and purling. And it makes this really cool, bumpy pattern that I like. Uh, so, <clears throat> okay. So, so what you're going to do is you're going to take your your yarn and this is the tail ignore the tail for now that just that's for later take the long piece that's attached to the ball and remember we wrap it around our fingers to hold the tension and we're going to knit one stitch stab it strangle it rip its guts out throw it off the cliff the whole thing now the trick is we're going to purl the next stitch. So you take the yarn on this, the unknit yarn, you bring it around to the front of the needle and you're going to reverse knit, which is purling. So instead of going from left to right, you're gonna go right to left. You're gonna, you're going to stab it this way, strangle it, rip out its guts and throw it off the cliff backwards. And then you bring the yarn to the back and you stab it from left to right, knitting. Stab it, strangle it, rip out its guts, throw it off the cliff. And you're gonna do it from the front. Bring the knit to the front, bring the yarn to the front. You're gonna go right to left. Stabbing, strangling, ripping out guts, throwing it off a cliff. So it's just back and forth. Yeah, we're throwing the cliff off backwards. Listen, this is this is high tech over here. Um, These are cashmere and they're really hot. They're coming off now. Oh my God. Okay. So, oops. Look, I just pulled the needle out by accident, but you see, if you don't panic and you hold it really still, you can see the four stitches and I'm just gonna go right through. Just, if you see something like this happen, just freeze. So you don't like pull the yarn. You don't pull anything out. Look, now they're right back on there. Always violence when knitting, listen. Always choose violence. Okay, so now I'm gonna continue. Knit, purl, knit, purl. So you can go back and watch the previous uh, lesson and it has a little bit more in depth about this. Knit, purl. Does anyone have a specific question? Don't panic, Hitchhiker's Guide to Knitting. It's true, no panic. Always pause, pause. Pearl. Okay, if somebody wants to see a pearl or a knit up, cl up close again, raise your hand. Mostly harmless knitting. <laughs> there are stabby things just in case. The violence is inherent. Knit towels for everybody. <laughs> okay. No, everyone's good? <laughs> All right. So no one was injured, as far as we know. All right, so I've gotten to the end of my row. I ended with a purl stitch facing me which means if it's a purl facing me, it means it's what? A knit stitch on the back. There's only two stitches, knits and purls, and they're just the opposite of each other. So if you're looking at knit stitches, they'll purl stitches on the back and vice versa. So when you turn the work to do the next row, if I'm looking at first a knit stitch, then a purl. And a purl you can tell because it has a little bump right up next to the needle. See that little bump? And a knit stitch doesn't. So a knit stitch looks like a V and a purl stitch looks like a little bump or with a little imagination, a purl. So if you're doing regular um, ribbed knitting, like the kind like a hat would stretch or a sock, you would, if you're looking at a knit, you would knit it. If you're looking at a purl, you would purl it. Seed stitch, what we're doing is the opposite. So I ended on a purl stitch which means when I turn it around, it's a knit stitch and I'm gonna purl it. So you, you do the opposite of what you're looking at. So 
whatever stitch you ended doing, do the same thing. So I ended on a purl, now I'm gonna purl the back. Uh, purl, then knit, then purl. So on the first row, I started with knit, ended with purl, because I have an even number of stitches. On the back, I'm gonna start with purl and end with knit. It's the opposite. Okay, here we go, knit, purl, knit, purl. I don't see anyone in the comments saying that they would like to see a stitch slow and up close. Let me know if you do. Charlie, do you have any questions? Yes, uh, I was wondering if um, if your brain allows you to do knitting and anything else. Yes, um, I've gotten to the point where I don't really have to look at what I'm doing unless I'm counting stitches for a pattern. Yeah. And I frequently, my favorite thing to do while I knit is watch TV and movies. Got it. Um, it keeps me from like chewing on my fingernails and, and eating useless snacks. So it keeps me busy. Because yep. I have anxiety and I'm a little fidgety, mm -hmm. a little ADD, and yep. it keeps all the parts of my brain quiet. And I produce something useful. That is true. Very warm, hand warmer mittens. That's what I do mostly. I do a lot of these things. And um, I'm right here. Actually, this is my current project. Um, I use double pointed needles so I can make a circle. So double pointed needles look like this. There's four or five of them usually, depending on how many, how big your project is. And you just, I'm just doing flat knitting, but yeah. you knit across. And when you get to the end, you don't turn around. You just rotate and go to the next needle and then rotate and go to the next needle. This is how I make hats and, and mittens and socks yeah. and things. Um, these are, for, this is for my husband. This is a really soft um, alpaca that I like. So that is my current project. You, um, I can bang those a, out in a few hours. Do you have a pattern for the hand warmers? Um, Karen's asking. I Hi, Karen. I will, it's in my brain. So I will um, send it to Charlie and he can send it to everyone. It's, it's literally measure your wrist, add half an inch, do a swatch, and put that number of needles evenly divided on the three needles. Then... I, you know, it depends on, and then you measure how long you want it. Some of mine come up to here. My husband just wants them his right to here. But when you get to the thumb, I knit in a buttonhole. Oh. And then close the buttonhole on the next round and continue along. And now you have a thumb hole if you want it. Got it. Cool. So that's what I do. So that I can give you that pattern too. It's usually about seven stitches that you cast off and you cast back on the next row. Awesome. Um, okay. So I called them smittens, which was a combination of sleeves and mittens. My husband doesn't like to call them that. He calls them hand warmers. Okay, so I'm continuing along, knit. What do you say? We're all pros by now. I love that. Um, is there a benefit for using double pointing needles for knitting in the round as opposed to the round needles with the cord? So I have found that when you use the, so there are, there are needles, that are connected by like a plastic or metal, usually plastic cord. Um, I can get some, hold on. You know you have too many needles when you need this whole thing to hold them. So I'm gonna unhook it. Are you ready? Wait, this isn't even my circular needles. Hold on, that's what I hope to get. Sam's gonna come back with like Holy a, moly. a barrel of needles. These are my circular needles. So, um, they're basically this.
the two needles with a cord between. The reason I don't usually use these is because um, if it's a small circle, you have to constantly slide the stitches around and I find it pulls. And I, I get frustrated by that. If it's a bigger thing, if it's a hat, what I would love is circular needles with needles that were like this long. So you could just work really finely because I find these are, the needles are just too long. So I use them for other things. If you have two pairs of these, you can line them up side by side and you can do actually two projects in the round at one time. Moira, the set costumer on Supernatural taught me how to do that. And I still get confused sometimes. You have to put a little nail polish on the tip of each one so you keep the sets of needles <laughs> straight. But basically you have two lines and you have the circ in, in a circle next to each other. And it's good for when you're doing something that has a pattern. If you don't have to write it down, you just do the same thing all the time. So you're not like, oh, well, 25 rows in, I added a stripe or a hole or a, a different kind of knitting. In any case, maybe I'm getting ahead of myself. I prefer the double pointed needles. Um, there are downsides. For example, when you, know, you might be on an airplane and drop one and it rolls four rows back under the seats. And then you have six people uh, or eight or 12 crawling around on the floor looking for your lost knitting needle um, at 30,000 feet. Uh, that doesn't happen with the double pointed ones because they're connected. I just, this is how I learned. I find it easy. You have to pull it a little tight at the end when you're transitioning from each needle. Um, otherwise you can end up with a looser stitch. Um, but that's what I do. That's, I like it better. So, um, but again, if you're working Actually, and if you're working on a really big project, like a, like a baby blanket or something like a big sweater, you can use double pointed because if you're using a really long needle, like I have some needles that are this like long like this, knits, knitting can get very heavy, especially if it's a blanket or a sweater. And so you, when you're knitting, it kind of goes, slides onto the needle and it gets really heavy and crowded. But if you have a circular one, you don't have to knit in the round, but it kind of just slides around and it all rests in your lap. And then you can turn the work around and it just, it just remains more balanced. So it's good for that as well. It's hard keeping the tension with double pointing needles. Yes. So that's why you just have to like give it a little tug for the last two and first two stitches on each needle and then just knit normally and then just give it a little extra tension because there will be some lost and it keeps and it balances out you bought a pair set of 18 pair of bamboo needles way to go because you're going to need them all having the cord might be very hard if you're working small circles yep i can do a cord on double pointed needles i can do one stitch each on th three of the needles and you make a little tiny cord in fact one of the original patterns i looked at for our cozy I've just braided this. I took three pieces of yarn and braided them together and I think it's fine. But what they wanted you to do was actually that. They wanted you to do three double pointed needles to make a little, I was like, that is a lot of work for no reason. <laughs> so I I, I uh, hunted that idea. Um, you made an I-cord, see, nice work. That An I-cord is exactly what that is. You You can do, one or two or even three stitches and makes like a big tube and you can use it for like in a sweatshirt um like these kind of things uh anyway so knit pearl and back on a knit so what i want you to do this week or this couple weeks until our next class i want you to make a cozy in the correct gauge which means you're making it three or four however many inches you want and I want you to measure your um, mug. And when you get to the eight or nine or 10 or however many inches your cup is, this works way better, by the way, with a mug, like a cup, like a tea cup that's round. I don't know how that's gonna work. I think it would just slide right off. I think it has to be a straight up and down mug or even just slightly slanted, but I think this is the best. And uh, next time we're gonna, we're going to make the cord. We're going to attach it. We're going to attach the button. And then we're going to talk about sizing. So I've left extra cord for mine so that if I ever have um, 
a smaller mug or a bigger mug, I can untie this and make the loop smaller or longer to accommodate the size of the mug if necessary. Um, so yeah, so we're gonna continue knitting and purling. Um, does anyone have a question about gauge or a gauge swatch or how to measure how many stitches are necessary? Problem is I had four stitches per needle for that project. So it was just the regular extra work and none of the regular knitting parts. Keeping to, oh yeah, four stitches per needle. So that, that was challenging, I'm sure. Um, but you just, it's just, it's just, you're spending all of your time concentrating on the tension um, with four stitches. So the whole thing has to be kept tight because there's only four stitches per needle. Is everyone working away? Advice on how to keep track when reducing stitches on double pointed needles for decreasing every other row. Uh, you could use little stitch counters. I mean, you could use anything. You could use a safety pin or whatever, but I have these. Hold on, I'm getting them. It's my little box of knitting stuff. I have a little thing. I have stitch holders. I have Cable needles, which we could talk about at some point. Um, these things, pom pom makers. Um, so these things, they're just little circles. You could use anything. Um, these are cheap and when you lose them, you don't care. So they're just a little um, circle of plastic. And if you were decreasing, you could on double pointed needles, so it doesn't slide off, you would um, knit one stitch, put the marker on, and then knit the next stitch and it would be trapped between stitches like that, so that um, I can show you. So I'm not gonna decrease or anything, but you knit one stitch, you put the holder, well, actually I have a smaller one because these needles are pretty small. Here's a nitty bitty one, slide it on there. And now it's it's trapped in there between the stitches, you see? And then the next row you're like, oh, um, I didn't decrease on that one, so I'm gonna take it out. And then when you come back around, you'd be like, oh, there's no marker, so I didn't decrease, and so I'm gonna, you know, something like that. Or you could put, these are pink and blue and white, and you could put, a blue one for a decrease row and a pink one for a not decrease row or whatever. You just, you just need to mark it because as soon as you put your knitting down, you're not going to remember where you were or what you did. So you um, need to keep track. I find that they have like little clickers that are knit counter stitch counters. I find those don't work because I can remember to click the thing. And I'm like, it's like taking your vitamins. If the day's not marked, like, did I take them or did I not? Was that yesterday? Like, it's very hard to remember. So I prefer something tactile that I can just look at and it will show me what I did or did not do. Show those rubber tips. Oh, these things, these things are awesome. So especially with double pointed needles, your, your stitches will slide right off sometimes in the bag. So I use things like this and you can use them just for regular knitting needles too, to keep stuff from sliding off but they're really helpful with double pointed, especially if you have a lot of stitches on there. There's these little things and they're cap and you just stick it on there and it's, and then your knit, your stitches don't fall off. But if you're using double pointed needles, you need a lot of them because you've got, you need six instead of two because you have six points with stitches on them. But I keep them with me all the time because you really don't want to open up your knitting or you pull your knitting out of the bag and you accidentally put it point down and everything just slides right off the needle. That's good times right there. Uh, best way to cast off and weaving in the end threads. Okay, so next time I was gonna teach you about casting off, um, I use paper clips that works. We <laughs> see setting down, it's true. I'm, Cause when you have as much junk as I have and crafting stuff, you're like, oh, 
that little box is over there and I keep the needles in there and the yarns in the other thing over there. It's it's very spread out around the house. Um, does someone say scavenger hunt? I know, we're, we're all sort of jonesing for a scavenger hunt, Charlie. Um, there's two kinds of casting off. So I'd like to go over those next week or next time. There's one that's just a straight cast off and it's, and it doesn't really give. It's just, it's, it's good for um, when you're sewing pieces together, if you just want it straight. I actually have a cast off that's stretchy, which is nice for these because if it's around, oh no, for this one, it doesn't matter. I'm thinking we're making wrist things. When I have these wrist things and it's around the end of your hand, it's nice if it stretches a little. Mm -hmm. um, I can show you a cast off stitch real quick. Cast off in pattern. Do we have time, Charlie, or do we bump yeah, it? To you, the time? No, we can we can do it. Um, and then we'll it's super yeah, easy. We'll... So cast off in pattern. So if you knit then purl, then knit then purl. Do that. So this one, I'm going to start with a purl. So you do the stitch like normal, but a little looser. Some people go up a size on the needles for casting off. I don't usually do that, but you could. And it probably would be a good idea. I'm just too lazy to go get a new set of needles. So I just do it just a little loose. So I purled one. Then the next stitch is going to be a knit stitch. I'm going to knit that. So I've got two kind of, see how there's a little more space than usual? Like I've just left a little air in there. I don't know if you can see it. Now you take the point of the left needle. You put it through the first stitch and you pull it up and over. Oops, oh gosh, that's hard to do. You. So here's the two stitches I knit. I'm gonna take the point of this needle. I'm gonna put it through the first stitch and pull it up and over the other one and keep the second stitch on the needle and it's made like a knot. So now I'll purl the next stitch and then go through that other first stitch up and over and pull it off. So you'll only have one or two stitches on the needle at any given time because you're taking the first stitch up and off and just do it loosely. And then, and then it will, you just, you're just interlocking the stitches basically is what you're doing, but I'm not ready to cast off. So I'm going to undo that. I still have 10 inches of knitting to go before I can do that. But we'll go over that more next time. We're gonna cast off and we'll talk about weaving in the stitches. Um, you wanna weave in the stitches following the pattern. So I'll show you how to do that next time. With, go get your um, finishing needle. One of yep. these. And that, so class three will be happening Saturday, April 27th at 9 a.m. Pacific, 12 p.m. Eastern. Uh, it looks like a few of you will be in Rome doing Rome things. Rome is a great place to knit. It's perfect. Right in front of one of the fountains or a, near a Duomo, for example. That's right. Duomo knitting is big, I hear. You can bring your needles on the plane if you want to. I you, that's what I do. I knit on the plane. You put them into your you put them into your hair or something. Well, like that was you? right after nine eleven when they were like, "You can't bring your needles on the plane." I was like, "Okay." They and were like, oh, where'd they go? I brought wooden ones, not metal. Yeah. Um, you, so you, I can't bring the needles on the plane. If you don't want to carry them, that's one thing. But yeah. that is, that is, um, well, you can put them in your, if you can put them in your suitcase, I mean, no, there, there's no problem with knitting needles. I don't think it's a length thing, but, but they'll, they'll if you want to bring them, nobody's going to judge you. But I, I, I only knit on planes. Like, that's what I do the whole time. Yeah. Smart. Well, Sam, thank you again. Uh, we're going to be moving on to the meet and greet portion of our show. Um, and again, class three, we will send you this video and then class three will take place April 27th. So you'll be getting uh, an invite for that. Will uh, I get an invite to that, Charlie? No, I don't know. You were kind of mean to me earlier. So I... Sorry. 